when I had like really gotten a handle on drinking, I would have like one, two beers if I felt like it. But I was in the middle of having a beer and the Lord was like, you don't need this anymore. I want you to stop. And I was like, <laughs> and I, and I knew I was like, yeah, I, I think I do too. Oh and then the next day it was just like gone. Like I had no desire to ever drink again. And even like smelling it or seeing it or anything, it just disgusts me. Yeah. I'm like, that's so gross. And who I became with it too, was just so terrible. Do you still, is it still like, um, like you have no desire anymore? Did that desire ever come back? Or was it like from that day forward? Uh, from that day forward, mostly. There's been seasons, not seasons, just like random, like 30 seconds where the enemy tries to be like, hey, that glass of wine looks good. Or like, look how much fun those people are having, quote unquote. Yeah. But not because then I think about how I acted and how I felt after and not even just like having a hangover or anything. But I, I was hurting a lot of people with what I was saying and what I was doing. And it was just, I mean, it was just pure evil what was happening. And so I don't really have that desire anymore. I, and I'll usually tell my husband or I'll tell somebody when it just like randomly happens. I'll be like, listen to what the enemy tried oh, to do yeah. today. Like, are you serious? That I already overcame that. Oh my goodness. It's actually crazy. Like, I feel like this podcast is perfectly timed in my life too, to, to be here and to talk, to be talking to you about this because it's something I've definitely struggled with my whole life as well. And um, I come from addicted parents and uh, I was the same way, you know, where it was almost like, like I never felt buzzed. I never felt buzzed. I never felt buzzed. And then it's like, boom, blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. And I remember like not making it home most nights and just like, I had a really terrible reputation all through it even it started in middle school, really all the way through college. And then it started to creep back into my life even after that. Mm. And so I never like cold turkey, like decided to go completely sober. But after after I was saved, so I was saved in like a really like radical way where like I knew that my whole life before was was bad and I knew that I couldn't open portals to demons because I saw a demon. So I became very afraid of opening portals in any way to demons. And I knew that substance abuse was one of those ways that we let demons in. So yeah. all my friends would smoke, smoke weed and drink and and I would still like dabble here and there. It was like I went cold turkey. I stopped doing everything. And then a few months go by and then I noticed I started dabbling again. And this was after I was saved. And it was the same kind of feeling where, you know, the Lord was telling me, like, you don't need this anymore. Kind of like what you said and where it wouldn't even feel good. Like in the past, it would feel good. But then at this point, after I was saved and after I knew the love and fulfillment of the Lord, it was like I would dabble with this stuff and it would feel so empty and so just like. Ugh, like heavy, mm -hmm. like it used to feel like something I could because I had a hard time making friends too. So I feel like that's why I would drink and do these things is because I was so uncomfortable in my own skin that mm -hmm. I needed to be intoxicated to talk to people. And then it made me feel lighter. But then after I was saved, I noticed like every time I did this stuff, I was like, no, like I'm lighter without it. 